Merry Christmas to you all! What? Christmas isn't until December? That's right, oh that's true, that's true. But this is what we're gonna call Christmas in July. Um, and you know that all summer long, we are talking about how we're putting our focus on faith. And we remember that faith is trusting in something you can't see because of what you can see. Sure, we can't see Jesus with our eyes, but we can put our faith in him knowing who he is and what he's done. When we put our focus on Jesus, we understand how good he is. We realize that we can trust him no matter what. And that, my friends, is a gift. Now to kick off this Christmas in July celebration, I'd like to play a game with Miss Caroline and you. I would love for you to play along at home. So. I have some Christmas carols in my head. Miss Caroline is going to try to guess the Christmas carol, but here's the catch. I'm not going to say the words out loud. I'm just gonna mouth them, and Miss Caroline is going to plug her ears just in case, because this Christmas carol whisper challenge, I might actually say a little something. So we need to make sure Miss Caroline cannot hear me. I'm going to voice, I'm going to, whatever, I'm gonna, Say these, but not say these. I'm gonna whisper these, and we'll see if Miss Caroline can get these right. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. First one. Oh, Christmas tree? Yes! Nice job! Good. Yeah. One done. Okay. How about this one? All right. Got it? Ready? Okay. Silent night. Good job. You got that one right away. Very good. Um, how about, plug your ears, right. here we go. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yes, I think you were just making me sing that one longer. <laughs> um, couple more, you good for sure, this? Okay, another one. all right, plug your ears. Okay. How about, Oh, holy night. Very good. And last one. Let's see. What would be a good one to finish with? Okay. Plug your ears. Ready? Yes. I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> we wish you a very Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> nice job. Thank, Thank you. you for playing. Give Miss Caroline a hand. Good job. Thank you for joining me for the Christmas Carol Whisper Challenge. All right, boys and girls, we are going to continue in our big story um, with a video today. And what we're gonna be learning about is what happened to the people after, after Jesus died, came back to life, and went to heaven. And so, let's watch the video together and I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Hey everybody! I'm Erica, and I want to tell you about my favorite month of the year. <gasps> no, I want to sing about it. I love July. You want to know why? I love July. You want to know why? It's because July is the month where you can play outside, eat homemade ice cream, and do all the fun summer things. But it's also when we celebrate Christmas in July. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the- It is the best time of the year! Some of you are probably thinking that it doesn't feel like Christmas time, and that's okay. It doesn't have to feel exactly like Christmas time to celebrate it. That's what Christmas in July is all about. It just takes a little extra faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Take Christmas presents, for example. Even though we can't see what's inside, we have faith that it's something good and exciting because it's from someone who cares about us and wants us to be happy. Like this one is from my friend, Haley. Man, do I want to see what's inside? Not a problem. Just gotta focus all my senses. Maybe I need to focus with an x-ray machine. Yeah. Okay, it's not a real x-ray machine, but it's homemade and it should do the trick. <laughs> Just one thing first. Got it. Now I can see what's inside. Hmm. It's kind of dark in here. This may take a while. Today's story is all about gifts, by the way. Actually, it's about one gift and it's a big one. You won't want to miss it. See you soon. 
Maybe it's a pair of socks. Or a composition book. Those are kind of black, aren't they? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Rin grabbed a handful of granola bars from the pantry and tossed them in her duffel as Aunt Dina watched. I don't know if they'll have snacks there. Aunt Dina raised an eyebrow and took a sip of coffee. Is it one of those church camps? I guess. I, I mean, Jess invited me. It's in the mountains. It sounds cool. You're going to have to shape up, you know. You don't go to church like them. Hey! I don't get in trouble. Rin's aunt grinned and shook her head. <laughs> Whatever you say, hun. Rin's mom breezed in with a rain poncho and handed it to Rin. Come on, Dina. Rin's a good kid and she's gonna have a great time. There's Jess. You go and have fun. It was a three hour trip up to Camp Hickory. Jess and her mom chattered away, but Rin couldn't help thinking about Aunt Dina's offhanded comment. I do mess up a lot. <laughs> Images scrolled through Rin's head like scenes from a film. The times Rin snapped at her little brother. Go away, Keegan, you're such a pain. That time last week when mom shut off Rin's internet access. That is so not fair. And Rin snuck the password off of her mom's phone. And that exam where she accidentally saw the answer off of her friend's test and wrote it down anyway. I shouldn't have done that. Hey Rin, we're almost there. Jess's cheerful voice cut into Rin's thoughts. She tried to smile as she looked out out the window at the winding mountain road and high blue sky. Great! Rin's worries haunted her as they checked in and made their way to the cabin. These kids all go to church. They know the right stuff to say and do. Rin glanced over to see Jess struggling with her oversized duffel and backpack. She decided it was time to level up. Hey, let me get that for you. But you've got... I can do it! Rin staggered toward the cabin, hauling both of their bags. Inside, they met their counselor, Sally. Hey there, I think this is all of us now. I'm really sorry, but the bottom bunk by the door is kind of creaky. We usually draw straws to see who will sleep there. I'll take it. What? Oh, well, that's great. At dinner, Rin looked out for more ways she could blot out the memories of her mistakes. They ran out of cherry cobbler. Here, you can have mine. When Sally spilled her water. Oops, I'll just. I got it. I'll run over to the kitchen and get a towel. After dinner, everyone hiked the half mile toward the outdoor amphitheater for the evening gathering. Rin's eyes darted back and forth, looking for more ways to help. Hey, you can slow your roll now. Sally fell into step with Rin, who grinned sheepishly. This is all kind of new for me. <laughs> me too. It's my first year as a counselor. It's just, everyone here has gone to church forever. They've got it all together. <laughs> Trust me, they don't. I don't. But at least they know the rules, the right stuff to do. Rin, you have been incredibly helpful and kind since you got here, which is awesome. But you don't have to do everything perfectly to fit in. At camp? Yeah, at camp, but also with God. That's what this week is about. Having fun and relaxing, knowing that it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. God totally loves and accepts you anyway. Rin frowned as she hopped over a fallen log across the trail. I lied to my mom last week. Well, own up to it. She'll still love you, and it sure won't change how God feels about you. <laughs> Not to be all churchy, but can I tell you this verse I love? Sure. It's the first thing I read when my friend Carl gave me a Bible three years ago. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift. It is not based on anything you have done. No one can brag about earning it. Christ, that means Jesus, right? Yeah, we'll talk about all that this week, but just know you can't work for God's love. He already loves you completely. Whether or not you lie to your mom or take the creaky bunk or give away your dessert. It just feels like 
I don't know, I should have to do something. I know, right? But just letting God love you, that's the most important thing. Doing good stuff comes after knowing how loved you are. Rin took a deep breath trying to take it all in. As the dust began to settle, she saw a large campfire ahead with rows of benches. Jess waved. Hey Rin, we saved you a seat. Rin turned back to Sally. Do you have a place to sit? Go ahead, I'll see you for s'mores after. Rin jogged over to the bench where Jess and the other girls from the cabin were sitting. It was a lot to process, but for the first time all day, she felt like she could relax because she knew there was nothing she had to do to fit in. Welcome back. Jesus is the one who allows us to have a relationship with God. He's the greatest gift we could ever receive. Since the very beginning of God's big story, people were waiting for a savior. And at just the right time, God sent his son, Jesus. And when Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all of our sins. He made a way so that everything would be right between us and God. Remember, salvation is a gift. God loves you. He made you. He has good plans for your life. There's nothing that you could do to make him love you more or less. He sent Jesus so we could be in relationship with him and one that lasts forever. So our bottom line for today is this. Jesus is a gift for everyone. Some of you have already put your faith in Jesus. If you have, that's the greatest decision you'll ever make. 
Maybe some of you are still trying to figure out what you believe. The good news is, every day you can discover more and more how much God loves you. Our memory verse this month is the same verse that we talked about in today's story from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Let's learn it together. Here it is. God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you do. It is God's gift, Ephesians 2, 8. It's true, Jesus is a gift for everyone. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for sending your son for us. Thank you for all that you do in our lives. Help us to see all the good that you're doing in our lives and the other people's lives around us so that we can continue to grow our faith in you. In your name, everybody said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today.